Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. On today's video, we've got a very special catering gig that I'm doing for the El Paso Police Department, and I'm gonna bring you guys along with me. I'm gonna show you how I smoke the ribs and also make a couple of sides. Stay tuned. You can see, look at this bark. It's crazy. Oh man, this is perfect. It helps to start with a nice sharp knife, okay? Oh my goodness. Look at that. All right, so I've got 16 racks of spare ribs and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do to trim them. I like to buy the full spare rib because that way I can cut them down to the way I like them. Sometimes you buy St. Louis ribs and they're really, really short, okay? But there's a lot of meat here that kind of gets removed as you can see here. So I'm gonna show you how I trim the full spare rib. It's real simple. Flip your ribs over, okay? Now this, this piece right here is the sternum, which is part of the pig. And I don't like to smoke my ribs with this because it just kind of gets in the way. So what I like to do is usually the, the fourth bone in, one, two, three, four, which is this one here is the longest one, okay? When you buy them from the store, they trim them usually right here, which is really short. I like to leave about an inch above that, okay? Because there's a lot of meat here um, that you can still eat, okay? So fourth bone up. And I just kind of draw myself a line of where I want to cut these ribs. Also keeping in mind that you want them as square as possible, okay? And that to me looks good. I can still see that, that mark that I made with my knife. So at this point, just start right here on this edge. And cut all the way across nice and straight. As you can see, that's kind of tough. That's that sternum bone. All right, so now that we've got the sternum removed, you don't want to throw this away because this you can smoke this and still eat it, okay? So save all of your trimmings. Obviously, if it's a small piece, just throw it away. But even this side that I'm going to trim next, <clears throat> this flap of meat here, what I like to do is just try to find the smallest bone, which is right here, and then cut right beside that. That way, this rib bone right here has all of this meat. Okay, so just cut a nice straight line like this. Save this as well because you can smoke that and eat it later. All right, so now that we've got this piece removed, the next step is to remove the silver skin off the back of the ribs. I'm going to leave this fat on here. I mean, I could trim, actually, I'm going to trim it because it's kind of heavy and it's got a little piece of meat on the top, but just trim it down a little bit. And now you can remove this, this last bone, but quite honestly, I would rather remove it when it's cooked. That way, if something happens, maybe this gets overcooked or whatever, you still have this nice clean rib on this edge right here. So I'm gonna leave that alone, okay? Especially on a catering deal, you want your ribs to look nice and presentable. So the next step is to remove the membrane off the back of these ribs, okay? Just grab a napkin and lift up, and if you're lucky, it'll come off in one piece. If not, you might have to fight it, like I'm having to fight it here a little bit. But I found that a napkin, or a paper towel, I'm sorry, is the best way to remove that. Okay, just like that. Next step is sometimes, I call this the skirt of the rib. Sometimes this is pretty big, but you know what, that's just a really small skirt so i'm just going to leave it alone so at this point i'm going to go ahead and leave it like this this is a nice trimmed rib the way i like to trim my ribs for any kind of catering gig nice and square now i'm doing this the night before tomorrow morning i'm starting my pit at four in the morning at that point i'll go ahead and rub these ribs down with some rub and i'll bring you guys along with me stay tuned all right so it's four o'clock in the morning and i've got a full basket of charcoal lit up I've got right here, I'm just gonna, I've got the hatch open, okay, the hatch on the uh, firebox. So I'm just gonna dump the charcoal in there, spread it out, just like that. And then the next step is to, depending on the size of the split, I'll either put two or three. These are pretty good size splits that I'm putting in right now. And again, my smoker is completely uh, closed, okay, and cold. 
So I've got two large splits that I'm just gonna lay on top of the charcoal bed here. Okay, and I'm leaving the, uh, the hatch open on my firebox just to let the black smoke come out. I'm gonna let that go. Let's uh, rub down these ribs. Stay tuned. All right, so I've got 12 racks of ribs laid out. I've got a stainless steel table that I like to use to prep. And I use some mustard as a binder. Again, I trimmed these last night, so the surface is a little bit dry. So I like to use a little bit of mustard, not a, not a ton of it, not a whole lot. And um, just, to, just to get the rubs to stick. Now, the very first rub that I'm using is an SPG. This is the same SPG uh, that I used on my brisket cook. In fact, I'm going to leave a link up top so you guys can see that that cook that was a brisket catering gig that i had this is salt pepper garlic paprika okay in fact i'm just going to do one just so you guys can see that i've already done the other side didn't want to bore you with the rubbing down of the ribs if you will so i'm just going to finish this one right here so spg second rub is garlic jalapeno seasonal from victory lane now as i mentioned earlier in the intro introduction or yesterday um, these ribs are for the el paso police department um, I live in the best neighborhood in the world and, you know, we've, uh, raised money to support our police department because of what's going on with this COVID-19 deal, just to, um, show them a little bit of appreciation for what they do for us. And, um, 16 racks, I mean, ribs, macaroni, salad, uh, beans and stuff, rolls, and a bunch of neighbors are making desserts, which is awesome. So the next rub is the competition rib rub. Again, from Victory Lane Barbecue. Like that. And these are going to sit here for probably 20 minutes while my smoker gets up to temperature. Just like that. Okay, that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and get these done. And I'll bring you guys back as soon as I load the uh, smoker. Stay tuned. All right, so I've got my ribs loaded up. And you can see that the rubs sweated in nicely. Now, the setup here is I've got six racks up here. Now, I could easily put eight racks of ribs if I wanted to just kind of push everything together. But I've got six racks on the top rack here. Then I've got three on the bottom. Then I've got four right here, kind of in the middle, middle left, if you will. Then on the top rack on the right side, I've got another, um, let me see, three racks on the top rack, but towards the left side. So again, 16 racks total. I'm gonna let these smoke low and slow at 225. 225 to 250 for probably four and a half, maybe five hours. Let me close the door so I don't lose a ton of heat. But um, I'll bring you guys back. One thing that I like to do is if they start to cook, some of the ribs like to cook a little bit faster than others, I will move them around. But usually this setup right here, again, low and slow, uh, it's not dangerous at all. So um, they're going to cook pretty evenly. So we'll see you guys back maybe in a couple of hours. Stay tuned. All right, so we're at the two hour mark now. Let's take a look at the ribs. Look at that beautiful color. So what I did uh, do earlier was move the ribs that were down here up to the top and those that were up on the top down here to the bottom. So I have rotated the racks a little bit and uh, this is what we're at again two hours later. Probably another hour or so. Then I'm going to wrap them in foil and put them back in. So I'll bring you guys back as soon as I wrap them. Stay tuned. Alright, so three hours into the cook now and... I think they're going to be ready to wrap. Look at that. You know, that's what you get with that low and slow. Just kind of let the fat render out of the rib itself. I haven't spritzed at all. You can see the surface is nice and, and uh, juicy. So the fat's just slowly rending out of the rib. So again, three hours in, I've got the color that I want. I'm going to go ahead and wrap them all in foil. And I will double wrap all of these racks. Um, I won't put any... Uh, liquid in them, no butter, no nothing. Okay, just again, just let them cook with their own fat. So, again, three hours in, cooking or smoking at 250, between 250 and 225. And this is what we have three hours later. So, I'm going to wrap them probably for an hour. And um, I'll bring you guys back as soon as I pull them out of the foil. Stay tuned. All right, so I just pulled the ribs off of the smoker. And I wanted to show you this amazing mountain of goodness. Again, that's 16 racks of ribs. Um, I'm fixing to wrap them in foil, but I wanted to show you how delicious they look just like that. I mean, I should just let them roll in the smoke, but I want the fat to render a little bit more. Some of these ribs are a little thick. 
But uh, that's what we're looking like. Again, three hours later, time to wrap. Stay tuned. All right, so here's what I do for my beans when I do catering, okay? I've got two small logs of chorizo in here that I've cooked and rendered down a little bit. The next step is add some black pepper. Probably a tablespoon of black pepper. Just like that. Add some chili powder. This is the Fiesta brand. Probably two tablespoons of this red chili powder. And this isn't hot. Now you can buy the hot if you wanted to. But this is just their fancy, fancy light red chili powder. So go ahead and mix that in there. Just like that. The next step is I am using the Bush's Pinto beans. This is their plain Pinto beans. This isn't a, a ranch style bean or anything like that. Just go ahead and pour the contents in there. I'm going to try not to make a mess. So here we go. There we go. Just like that. Now I am making two batches for the El Paso Police Department. But a batch like this will probably feed maybe 20 people. Okay. So just bring them to a light boil. Then we'll put them in a small foil pan, cover them with plastic, and then with foil on top of the plastic. Okay. So that's it. This is the beans. Let me show you the uh, macaroni salad that my wife made. Stay tuned. All right, so here's the macaroni salad that my wife made. And this is the absolute best macaroni salad in the world. We used four pounds of macaroni. And then we used a pound and a half of cheddar cheese. We used one and a half pounds of ham, the good ham. And then she um, cut it into small cubes. We used about four uh, celery sticks and about an onion. Now she likes to finely chop it because a lot of people don't may not like onions or celery. And I gotta tell you, you'll barely notice that it's in there. Plus some back pe uh, black pepper and then some mayonnaise. Okay, and I did use the Duke's mayonnaise, which is the best mayo in the world. So this is what it looks like. And I gotta tell you, this is the absolute best macaroni that you can ever have. And I'm sure the uh, police officers are gonna enjoy this. So I will cover this with just foil, no plastic wrap, just foil. Keep it in my fridge until I'm ready to deliver. So they're gonna get about probably four of these trays of the salad. So let's go check on those ribs. All right, one ingredient that I forgot to mention to you, there are some black olives in here. So you can see the black olives. And again, those are chopped uh, kind of fine as well. So let's go check on those ribs. All right, so the ribs have been wrapped for an hour. Let's take a look at them. Now, I was able to put all 16 racks on just one side of my pit. So you can imagine I could probably fit 30, maybe 32 racks of ribs on the entire smoker. Now I did put them bone, uh, bone side down. So this is what they look like right there. All right, so half of these ribs, I am going to use some sauce. This is the Blues Hog Champion uh, blend with uh, mixed with Sweet Baby Ray's and it did warm it up. So half of these ribs, I'm gonna open up the foil just like this, tuck the ends in like this and apply some sauce. And then the other half, I'm not gonna apply any sauce to them because there are some people that don't want any barbecue sauce or don't like barbecue sauce. So half of them will have sauce. Half of them won't. I'm going to go ahead and sauce them up. Then I'll bring you guys inside when I start to slice them up. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so the ribs are ready. And again, I sauced only half of them. This is a rack that I didn't sauce. And they look absolutely amazing. I got to tell you, you don't need to put any liquid. I mean, if you don't want to, this is kind of what you end up with. So this is more of a kind of a Texas style rib with no sauce or anything like that. So I use my electric knife. You can see I've got a full tray of ribs here already. Starting this in. Look at that smoke ring. And I gotta tell you, these are extremely tender. Just by cutting them, I can tell you they're really tender. So the police officers are gonna be really happy with these ribs. We're gonna go ahead and uh, deliver the food. I'm gonna see if I can get some video of us at the uh, police station. Oh, Stay tuned for we made it to the police department and Got all the food spread out. Um, got some officers enjoying some of the ribs. Got desserts, sides. 
So again, this is this is what we do it for, uh, the brave men and women, and uh, it's such a great pleasure to to be able to provide a, a good meal for them. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until next time, Joe Smoking Joe Spit Barbecue. See ya.